Welcome to this module introduction to cellular systems. Many different technologies and protocols are used around the world to provide cellular coverage. In this module we will be introducing you to the base station, the cellular system layout, cellular tower configurations, cellular technologies, cellular system protocol allocations, and an overview of cellular data. This module will take approximately 12 minutes to complete. Cellular systems use equipment called base stations, BTS, or cell sites to provide coverage. They can be identified by the towers that are used. The cell site is typically high power with 10 to 100 watts of output power. With the high output power and high towers, the base station can have a range of up to 30 kilometers in rural areas. The range of the base station is designed using the number of subscribers in the area. In urban areas with high subscriber densities, the base station may have a range as small as 500 meters. The transmit signal from the base station is called the forward or downlink. Mobile and portable phones typically have a low output power of 0.5 watts maximum, and being close to the ground, their range is significantly smaller. The transmit signal from the mobile is called the reverse or uplink. The cellular system consists of a number of cell sites connected together in a cell-like structure, and linked with a computer called a switch, MSC or MSTO. To provide continuous service, the cell site coverage areas are designed to overlap. A cellular operator will often have multiple linked switches that control the connected cell sites, log all billing information, and contain current records of all cellular subscribers and calls. For a cellular-to-cellular -cellular call, the call is originated at the mobile. The signal is sent to the strongest cell site and passed to the switch. The switch then transfers the signal to the cell site with the receiving mobile. The switch from the cellular company is also connected to the landline telephone company PSTN through a gateway. For a cellular to landline call, the signal is sent to the strongest cell site and passed to the switch. The switch then transfers the signal to the PSTN exchange and onto the land telephone. As the mobile moves from one cell to another, the control is passed to the relevant cell using a process called a handoff. The configuration of the cell site is dependent upon the equipment manufacturer and the design of the operator. The most common configuration in the world is the three-sector or 120-degree cell site. This can be visually identified by the triangle structure on the top of the tower. The sectors are typically named in a clockwise manner A, B, C or X, Y, Z or Alpha, Beta, Gamma. The A sector points north is an industry standard. Each sector uses a different group of channels. It is common for operators to configure three-sector cell sites around freeways and main roads as two-sector sites. Another configuration is the six-sector or 60-degree cell site. This can be visually identified by the hexagon structure on top of the tower. The sectors are typically named in a clockwise manner A through to F, or U through to Z. The A sector points north as an industry standard and each sector has a different group of channels. The third type of cell site configuration is the omnidirectional site, and is sometimes seen in the rural environment where there are only low subscriber levels. In the omni site, there is only one group of channels available for the whole cell site. There are three core communications technologies used for phones to communicate with the base station over the air. All current cellular protocols are derived from these core technologies. Analog FM is the original cellular technology. Most analog systems are no longer operating, with their spectrum reused for newer digital systems, but they may still occasionally be found in some third world countries. The protocols that used analog technology were IMPS or TIA-553, NMT, TACS and NAMPS or IS-88. TDMA is a digital technology used in IS-54, IS-136. GSM, IDEN and DECT systems. CDMA is a digital technology used in IS-95, CDMA-2000, WCDMA or UMTS, and LTE or WiMAX systems. The individual protocols derived from a core technology are not necessarily compatible for example a GSM phone will not work on an IS-54 system. 
All original cellular telephone systems used analog FM transmissions in the 800 to 900 MHz band. The AMP system was split to allow for two cellular operators A and B, and originally only had 666 channels. As it became more popular, this was expanded to 832 channels and consisted of a group of 42 analog control channels 21 for system A, and 21 for system B, and a group of 790 analog voice channels 395 for system A, and 395 for system B. Most modern systems now use up to 1,024 channels. Control channels are used to control call setup and communicate with the mobile when it is not in use. The control channel signal transmits continuously so the mobile can always find it. Voice channels are used to transmit a conversation that is in progress. With a limited number of channels available, the cellular operators use a system called frequency reuse, where the same channel number can be used in multiple base stations. TDMA or time division multiple access is a form of digital wireless technology which expands the capacity of the available radio channels by dividing the older analog channel into separate time-based divisions or time slots. Currently each channel supports between 3 and 8 time slots, and can therefore transmit 3 to 8 conversations simultaneously. The easiest way to understand TDMA is to think of a train. At station 1 there are 3 people with messages to be transported to 3 other people at station 2. The people at station 1 place a message into each carriage. The train then goes to station 2, and the people there retrieve their message from the carriages. The train then returns to station 1, and this process continues until the whole message has been transmitted. In technical terms each carriage represents a time slot. The TDMA IS-136 systems also called DAMPs are still found in some areas in North and South America. Although many operators have changed to GSM. GSM is the most popular system globally, and has all digital channels using TDMA technology. CDMA or Code Division Multiple Access was originally designed for military spread spectrum communications. The best way to understand CDMA is to think of a room full of people where many conversations are taking place at one time, but each conversation is in a different language. A listener who can understand the language is able to follow a particular conversation, but to someone who cannot understand the language it is just noise. With CDMA, individual conversations are digitized and then encoded. Each telephone or data call is assigned a unique code, and as long as the receiving device has the correct code, it can pick its conversation out from the crowd. Many CDMA systems have evolved from the original IS-95 to CDMA-2000. New technologies such as WCDMA or UMTS use a CDMA air interface, but are actually regarded as GSM systems, using GSM protocols to communicate with a network switch. LTE or WIMAX also have a CDMA air interface, but utilize Internet protocols for network communication rather than a radio channels based system. CDMA protocols are also used for some satellite systems such as Global Star. Sky Terra and Terra Star. IDEN or Integrated Dispatch Enhanced Networks are based on TDMA technology. The proprietary IDEN system was developed by Nextel and Motorola. It enables users to take full advantage of the capabilities of two-way dispatch trunk radio, commonly called push-to-talk, and full duplex telephone calls in one phone. This has been very popular with subscribers as they can use the dispatch radio function to provide free phone-to-phone -phone service. The operation band is typically around 800 MHz, just below the cellular band, however there is a 1500 MHz system in Japan. Dual-mode IDEN phones have the capability to switch to CDMA for telephone calls, but stay in IDEN mode for push-to-talk calls. Cellular systems around the world use a variety of technologies, protocols and frequencies. Many of the technologies we have discussed can be used in multiple frequency bands. For example GSM can be used at 850, 900, 1800 and 1900 MHz. When talking about a particular cellular operator system, it is important to specify both the protocol and frequency band to avoid confusion, for example GSM 900, 
or TDMA 1900. Cellular systems can also be used for data communication. SMS or short message service is used by all cellular protocols, and consists of a text message of up to 160 characters. The data protocol for analog systems was CDPD or Cellular Digital Packet Data. GSM initially used General Packet Service GPRS, which was eventually upgraded to enhance data rates for GSM Evolution or EDGE. CDMA has evolved with EVDO and 1XRTT updates for improved data performance. With new 3G and 4G technologies it is now possible to get high data rates giving broadband performance. Thanks to marketing spin from the various cellular operators, there is often a lot of confusion over 3G and 4G technologies. Earlier operators used the term 3G to describe systems using CDMA 2000 with EVDO data. 3G is also commonly used to refer to WCDMA systems using HSDPA high-speed downlink packet access data. Even though they are both called 3G, there is a significant difference in speed and capabilities of the two 3G technologies. The current talk of the town is 4G. This will be the first cellular all-digital system using Internet protocol for addressing. The two 4G systems are LTE Long-Term Evolution and WiMAX. Depending on system implementation, both can provide similar performance. Many operators still using CDMA 2000 will upgrade to 4G quickly so they do not lose market share to the much faster WCDMA. Operators currently using HSDPA are expected to upgrade to 4G sometime in the next five years. Congratulations on completing this module. Many different technologies and protocols are used around the world to provide cellular coverage. In this module we have discussed the base station, the cellular system layout, cellular tower configurations, cellular technologies, cellular system protocol allocations, and 